Hey, thanks for tuning in once again to Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Derling with a, another new episode for you here. I thought uh, on the occasion of the release of a brand new Night Ranger album called Don't Let Up, which we'll get to, I thought I'd go through my Night Ranger CD collection and uh, go through these with you. I don't have every single live album and compilation that they've put out, but I've got all their studio albums, including some CDs that are pretty rare, and one CD in particular that's very, very special to me, because, um, well, we'll get to it. So we'll get started on Tim's Vinyl Confessions, my Night Ranger CD collection. Uh, first Night Ranger album, Dawn Patrol, came out in 1982. And the CD version I have here is a U.S. copy on MCA. It's got the compact disc, compact price, right there on the cover. That's what a lot of the old MCA discs would do. And they have this very generic looking back cover with the lines going down, song titles. And this logo here is the Camel Records, which was a small, it wasn't even a division of MCA, it was just a small independent label run by a guy named Bruce Bird, I believe, and that was Night Ranger's sort of sub-label. And uh, that's what it looked like on the side. Again, very generic looking MCA discs, what they looked like at the time. The CD itself. And this, uh, if you buy, so if you bought MCA discs be previously from the 80s, you'll recognize this compact disc, compact price, almost advertising other discs in, you know, that were available at the time and some of the artists are kind of all over the place musically, but so it doesn't have like the back cover proper as it was, uh, would have been on the album. And I'm sure there's remastered editions, but now this one is a little bit different. So, um, like the MCA discs at the time would have the, just the song titles written and who produced it. But this copy anyway also has a, the picture of the band that's the featured on the record too. So a little bit more than you'd normally get. There's no lyrics or anything like that. I'm not sure how old that disc is, but I haven't seen one like it for quite a long time. So next up is the big album for Night Ranger, their biggest, uh, Midnight Madness, originally released in 1983. This disc probably didn't follow too long after that. I think this is probably a pretty early pressing of Midnight Madness. Of course, this one features Sister Christian, they're sort of uh, the, the, the song that most people would know by them. Also, You Could Still Rock in America and When You Close Your Eyes came off of this one. It's a great album. Uh, it's one of these things where the vinyl version of it, which I have talked about previously, there's a lot going on in the background here, and that continues on the back cover. So they actually, instead of just having the generic MCA back cover, which they do for a lot of their CDs, they've actually reprinted the back cover of the record, which tells me this one might be a little bit of an older issue uh, in its US. I bought this and Dawn Patrol at the same time used, so I don't know how old they are. And that's what it looks like on the side. And as far as what's inside of it, um, there's the disc itself, the MCA logo prominently down the side. And this actually has the lyrics and credits as they would have been presented inside the original album. So actually a little bit of value there compared to what uh, some of the old MCA discs did. And then of course as the later 80s moved along they tended to start to look the same in every format that they were released and that's the case with the third Night Ranger album Seven Wishes. Love this album. Uh, this is another platinum album for them. Sentimental Street came off of this one, Four in the Morning and Goodbye were all hit singles off of this one. Um, looks cooler on vinyl of course. Flying the plane there. That's what it looks like on the side. And the back cover. They've actually reprinted the back cover as well. I bought this one new. It's a US version. I probably didn't get it to like 95. Um, probably at a time when if you, if I hadn't gotten it then, would have gotten rare. Uh, again, the MCA disc looks about the same. The booklet inside of it uh, does a fair job of reprinting what originally would have came, come with the record folds out. Um, sometimes not the easiest fold out. So this is interesting. So that's almost approaching the size of what the record album would look like. Uh, to the point where, now this is funny to me, and I don't know, they, they didn't think of this back then when they were just putting these things out on CD. 
it still says side one and side two. They just took the, the back cover of the record and just reprinted it verbatim. There are no sides to a CD. Anyway, I just think that's kind of funny. And then they reprinted the lyrics. Actually sprang for some color ink for the song titles. So, you know, not a bad job. For an early CD issue, not a bad job. But the side one and side two, I think, is kind of funny. If you're a Night Ranger fan, you know the next album up is Big Life, 1987. I'll show that to you, but first a little preamble. Big Life, this, this CD I'm about to show you is actually the first CD I ever bought. So that makes it pretty significant in my music collection. I mean, it's not the first album I ever bought, but it's the first compact disc I ever bought. And it wasn't until uh, Christmas of 1990 was the first time that there was a CD player in our house. And honestly, I had so many cassettes at that point that I thought, well, um, maybe I'll get a few CDs. Honestly, just for more for novelty value. Obviously, that, that changed then, but I was looking around to find uh, uh, CDs that were like in the markdown bins that were quite cheap. And unfortunately, even though I had about two dozen of them at the peak, I don't have any more of my long box covers that they used to come in that were the, the 12 inches high, so they would fit in the record bins. But uh, the very first one I bought was this one, Big Life. So I've had this CD longer than any other CD in my collection, even though I might have older ones. Um, this is the first one I ever bought. It's a big life on CD from 1987. Remember the first time I bought the long box, and I thought, okay, where's, how do I play this? And I opened the bottom, and this thing fell out. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And it, you know, there was no tape hiss. I thought, wow, this is really cool. I was a little late to the party on that. It was cool because at the time I bought this, this was already a deleted album, even though it was certified gold. So that's the back cover. And... Uh, Side, I like that color blue. Really like that color blue, actually. Uh, again, typical MCA looking disc. They uh, they didn't have a lot of variation. There was not a lot of color used. And the uh, lyrics and credits. It was an extra picture that was in the record that didn't appear on the CD or cassette. But uh, yeah, this started me buying CDs. It all began right here. I'd already had the cassette, but I thought, that's pretty cool. So yeah, this is pretty special to me. Oldest album, all CD in my collection. Next one is one of the, uh, I think, more overlooked Night Ranger albums. It was the final album they did for MCA. came out in 1988, Man in Motion. This is a great, great album. It's a, it's a little harder. Not as many keyboards on it, uh, and that's not a... It's just a statement. I just really like this album. There were no big hits off of it, and it was the em end of their initial phase of their career, because after this, um, they, they, they went on hiatus, they broke up for a while, and of course Jack Blades went on to uh, success with a couple records with Damn Yankees, and uh, Brad Gillis did some solo work, they all just kind of went their own way. Uh, by this time, their keyboard player, Alan Fitzgerald, had already left, although he does have at least one co-write on here. This is a U.S. version. Uh, this, this album wasn't in print very long, so this is not the easiest thing to find an original CD of Man in Motion. If you're a fan of uh, Hugh Symes' artwork, you might recognize this. This is his artwork. The cassette and the C, uh, the cassette version of this looks slightly different, but this is uh, what the record looks like as well. And again, MCA disc. All the lyrics and credits reprinted here. And a picture of the band as a four-piece, as opposed to a five-piece. The only time they did that. And so, when a band's career winds down, and they've had any success at all, what does the record label do? They put out a Greatest Hits. And in 1989, MCA put out this Night Ranger Greatest Hits CD, which, even though there have been compilations since then, this is still a pretty good primer for Night Ranger, I think. I pop this one in a lot. It's just some great songs on it. You can tell if you look at this that the band photo is superimposed onto this street background. It took me a while to notice that, but uh, again, this is a U.S. edition on MCA. Uh, the cassette had 10 songs on it. The CD has 12. That was a big selling point with early CDs in the mid to late 80s. They wanted to, to promote the CDs, so they put extra songs on here. So Eddie's coming out tonight and Rumors in the Air which neither of which were singles, I don't think. Rumors in the Air might have been, but they got stuck on the end of this. Which is odd, because there were um, th there were other singles that didn't end up on this, but just one of those things. Once again, 
there's your disc and very very little inside it for credits as you would might expect a, a CD thrown out by a record company just trying to you know finish up the band's contracts there's a little back cover there and the song titles where they came from and a little bit of credits mostly with the art design it was a pleasant surprise for me because uh, I was kind of getting just really getting into Night Ranger even though I'd heard their songs on the radio for many years started buying their albums right in the late 80s when they were breaking up so it was a surprise for me when there was a new Night Ranger album that I came across and back then before the internet there was no ads for anything like that if it wasn't a, a brand new album that a record company was behind so I stumbled upon this on cassette initially in late 1990 and eventually got the CD live in Japan of course like a lot of you know a lot of the international bands, they, they were big in Japan. Japan really had an appetite for this kind of melodic rock music. So MCA put this out. Uh, that is not Alan Fitzgerald. That's a guy named Jesse Bradman who played on uh, Man in Motion. And he ended up doing that tour with them, uh, which probably did better overseas than it did in North America because it wasn't a successful album. It's pretty much got the track listing you'd expect to see on a live Night Ranger album, but it's a good sounding, very professional sounding. Not so easy to find these days. Uh, back cover, a few band shots there. Not much for credits. And that was that for quite a few years. And then in 1995, um, we'll backtrack a little bit. 1992, I started reading in Metal Edge that there was a new Night Ranger. Of course, Jack Blades was in Damn Yankees, but uh, Kelly Key, the drummer and the Coley vocalist, and Brad Gillis, guitar player, who are the three of them are kind of like the core of Night Ranger. They kind of formed their an, a new version of Night Ranger, and uh, they only did one album, and it came out in 1995, and it's called Feeding Off the Mojo. Uh, sort of a comic book design here. Now. So you're thinking, who was in this band? This was on a label called Drive Entertainment, which I don't have anything else on this label. So they hired a bass player and a singer. This guy here, his name was Gary Moon. Uh, it doesn't sound anything like Jack Blades. He's got a very raspy voice. Sounds a little bit like Tom Kiefer from Cinderella. This has some good songs on it. I mean, this is the you know mid-90s. This was the grunge era. And melodic rock had kind of <laughs> took a deep dive underground. So... Uh, I was glad to see this come out. I don't like all of it, but uh, there's enough of it on here that's a worthwhile listen. Um, Last Chance is a good song. Precious Time is a great ballad. Um, Music Box is a good song. There's a good stuff on here, but of course, Small Label wasn't likely to do much. For once, there's actually some graphics on the CD. There's another group photo. Of course, the band kind of, it, much like um, Triumph's Edge of Excess album. It was the only album they did without Rick Emmett. They kind of swear this album off now. What's interesting is if you look in the, the credits, they kind of gave a name to this character on the front cover. Actually, he is a, the Night Ranger, which is kind of a neat idea. A bit late in the game for them to come up with a mascot. So in 1997, there was a, a, a reunion. Uh, actually, in 96, it was a reunion of the, the, the original Night Ranger lineup, and they did a, a pretty successful tour. Um, actually had enough momentum to get signed to Sony Music, specifically the Legacy um, version of the label, and they reunited for a new studio album. So 1997, this came out. This is Neverland. Great album, great melodic rock album. That's the first song forever all over again. Kind of a power ballad. Actually got some radio play in some markets, and um, let me stop just short of charting on Top 40 nationally but at that level I still remember hearing it on the radio a little bit this is actually uh, I think the only Canadian Night Ranger disc I have so here's the back cover the original band and uh, lineup it was a nice surprise to see this come out and this is the, the CD itself has got a cool bluish it's almost a purple design I don't know how it's going to show in the light but when you actually look at it it's got a little bit more purple in it but very very good album. It didn't. Uh, it never took off. Uh, they never spun off any more singles there, so the momentum was kind of lost. Lyrics and credits inside here, and a lot of pictures, a lot of band photos. And 
And so this lineup survived for one more album. They didn't remain on Sony Music, though. They ended up on CMC International, which was um, a label that sprang up in the early 90s that was distributed by BMG that took on some hard rock and metal acts that uh, had, were, had previously been on major labels. I'm trying to think. I don't think that they took on bands. They don't think they took on new bands. I think they just they, they took on established acts. And did well with some of them. I know they did uh, fairly well with Leonard Skinner, for instance. So, in 1998, this album came out, Night Ranger 7, which is a bit of a misnomer, because if you count uh, Feeding Off the Mojo as a Night Ranger studio album, this would actually be the eighth one. So, that tells me they really they just they don't want anything to do with that. Which is a shame. It's, it's got some good stuff on it. But uh, 7 came out. I don't like it quite as much as Neverland, but there are some good songs on it. I mean, a band like Night Ranger... Even when they're kind of phoning it in, you're still going to end up with a few good songs. And this was the last album to feature the... Uh, hold off on that a second, I'll check one more thing. I, I know that the classic original lineup was on this album. Night Ranger's a band that uh, did a lot of um, co-writing. Jack Blades, you see his name co uh, you know, show up on a lot of people, albums, Aerosmith, Great White, Rat. And so some of those co-writers intersect, like Tommy Shaw co-writes co a song on here. Most of them were written in-house. And uh, just a band photo and the lyrics, one of those things where it's really, really hard to, the, the lyrics really don't read that well against the background, but I guess they were trying to be arty or something like that. So predictably this album didn't exactly set the world on fire. Then um, and then it was nothing from nothing new no new music from Night Ranger for a uh, very many years um, until 2008 when this album emerged. Now uh, this is called Hole in the Sun. This is a US version that's on uh, VH1 Classic Records. They had a label at one point. They also VH1 Classic as far as the music end of it are also the company that issued the three Cosology DVD volumes, which were really, really good. This album actually came out a year before, I think in Japan and other markets, with a totally different cover. But I held out until I could get a, a somewhat uh, a domestic one. That's what it looked like on the side. And there's the song titles. Kind of cool CD graphic as well. Okay, so that silhouette of the band, if you can picture like a white background and just black silhouette, that's what the international version of this looked like. No, I was right, yeah, I was right about seven. That was the last one Alan Fitzgerald appeared on. The keyboards on this one were actually done by Michael Lardy, who was, of course, a member of Great White. So it's all of these um, crossover things. It's a thanks from each of the band members on here. This was the last album that Jeff Watson appeared on. And I don't know what happened, but it was a bitter, I don't think it was a happy split between Jeff Watson and the rest of the band. And they've had, since then, the core of the band has been Jeff, uh, Jack Blades, Brad Gillis, Kelly Kiki, and they've had different keyboard players and different guitar players. So, moving on from that, so that album didn't, I think they were trying to sound modern, and most of the time when an established classic act tries to sound modern, it really falls flat. And the best thing they could do is sound like themselves, which is what they did this time around in 2011 with Somewhere in California. This is a classic. If it looks like a classic Night Ranger album, you can be rest assured it sounds like one too. Very small printing on that one. If you could see that one, they just kind of tried to do like a cassette where they squeezed it together, the title and the name of the band in one instead of just putting it horizontally. This was the first one they did on Frontiers Records, which is like the destination label nowadays for melodic rock bands, old and new. Picture of the group. Um, that's Joel Hoekstra on guitar there, second guitar. He's gone on to do a lot of different things. He's currently a member of Whitesnake. Keyboard players, I think it's Christian something, not Sister Christian. Um, no, maybe it's Eric. That may be Eric Levy. They've had a lot of different second yeah, guitar players and keyboard players. So I do this live, guys. I don't often rehearse here. So that's what the disc itself looks like. A lot of thanks um, and all of the uh, lyrics and credits 
are inside here as well. There's a lot of great songs on here. This was a nice surprise to get. So, yeah, Eric Levy. Yeah, so, but he didn't, he did not remain in the band, I don't recall, I don't think. And uh, so, uh, 2014, not a lot of turnaround time, which is good. Another Night Ranger album came out. This is High Road. Again, on it's Frontiers Records, but this is a, uh, a foreign version, which is on Scarecrow Records. I have a Tesla release like that. This is a deluxe edition that contains a bonus DVD, but there's the cover. I don't know if that's the Golden Gate Bridge or not. They are a San Francisco-based band. It's just a little thicker here because it's got the two discs. This is good, too. Another good one. They've been pretty consistent. Uh, the DVD has a uh, making of the album and a couple of sort of like home... Uh, well, not home videos, but they're videos, but they were done by the band themselves. I have seen this one on vinyl, too. If I ever get more of a complete collection, I will do a Night Ranger vinyl collection. That's what the disc the CD looks like, and DVD, not that much different. And here is, well, I dropped it, the booklet to High Road. Back cover of the booklet. So this time around, um, let's see who's in the band at this point. It's still Joel Holkstra and Eric Levy, so it must have been after this album that there were changes. Um, so there's the lyrics. All the credits are in there. And that's good, too. These these last few, if you were ever a Night Ranger fan. Definitely, I'm not holding the sun, I wouldn't knock myself out trying to get, unless you're a completist. But somewhere in California, in High Road, definitely worth picking up. And that brings us to the very present and an album that's only been out for about a month now, the brand new Night Ranger album, Don't Let Up. Uh, as per the case of their last few, this is on Frontiers Records. This is a deluxe edition that also includes a DVD with a couple videos and a sort of a making of. That's what it looks like on the side, and that's what it looks like on the back. Fold out their CD and DVD and the uh, booklet that comes with it. They're going with this whole license plate thing here. Uh, you can see that better back on the 35, meaning they've been around for 35 years now. And every one of the song titles, wherever possible, they work in numbers instead of letters. Uh, not unlike what they did on the cover of Journey Escape. And as far as the album itself goes, um, listen to it a few times now. It's a Night Ranger album. It's melodic rock. They, they're not trying out there to reinvent the wheel. And um, they're just doing what they do best. There's a few really, really cool songs in here. Some songs sound a little bit different. Um, I will say this. If you're going to write a song, don't steal a well-known title. They have a song on here called We Can Work It Out, which is not a Beatles cover. It's just, But that title is just, in my opinion, it's just a little bit too distinctive. It's the band as it has been for the last few years. In other words, it's uh, Jack Blades, Kelly Keegee, Brad Gillis, Eric Levy, and Kerry Kelly. So they've got the core three guys and uh, the two newer guys. I think that's been the, the lineup there for a little bit. Um, but, you know, check it out. If, if you're a Night Ranger fan, you like the old stuff. I mean, they're still kind of doing it. There's no real... Um, how can I say this? Some good songs on here. I haven't heard any real must have. In other words, I don't know if there's any songs on here that would be like, okay, this one will be out of the set list. This one will be out to the set list. Um, I think actually of, of the, the, the last few albums they've done, and they've actually been quite prolific, I still think Somewhere in California from 2011 is the best of the new batch, but it's all really good, and I'm glad that they're still making new music, and it could be a grower. There's, uh, it's interesting to me that the very last song, Nothing Left Yesterday, was stuck at the end. To me, that could have been a single. But uh, Running Out of Time is really good. Uh, somehow, some ways, really good. Say what you want. There is good stuff on here. And, you know, let's give it some time. Maybe it'll uh, make its way into the, the Hall of Fame for, for Night Ranger. But those are my uh, Night Ranger CDs. Thanks for watching another episode of Tim's Final Confessions.